Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. With this week's episode of the Market Monday, I was going to talk about MTGO uh, for today's Market Monday, but today's just too juicy with the Commander 2018 spoilers. This isn't going to be much on a spoiler, uh, like specific targets to pick up uh, d- based on what cards were spoiled. Possibly we can do that later on the week where I have more of my thoughts collected. I have just been out hiking and camping this entire weekend and I'm spent. I just try to really think about those particular uh, topics at the moment of, of what cards to pick up. However, th- something interesting came to my attention today with buy list prices of both Channel Fireball and Card Kingdom. And they're very suspect. And I don't think this is a topic I've talked about on Market Monday before, which is the topic of insider trading. Um, I think that if there are certain cards not spoiled soon, or even not in this particular set, it might be time to get our pitchforks because there are some very, very crazy things going on with both Channel Fireball and Card Kingdom's buy list. So let me let me give you a little bit of a uh, uh, an in, a go-to of how buy lists work. Usually for the vast majority of like Abu Games, uh, Star City Games, uh, Channel Fireball, Card Kingdom, they are aggressive on their buy lists only when they're out of stock. But I've found some interesting things happening right now uh, with Card Kingdom. Now at least Card Kingdom's a little more transparent. When Star City Games does a buy list, they'll th- put everything in out- as out of stock on their end of things, and then they will go uh, increase their buy list, and secretly they'll have just hordes of things in stock. I watched them do it with the Fetchlands. I also watched them do it with Tarmogoyf, where they bought out the entire internet with the Fetchlands and then raised the price by a good 20 bucks on the Fetchlands. And then we saw at GP Vegas 2013, uh, where they mysteriously went out of stock at their site, and then went around and bought every copy of Tarmogoyf when everyone thought the price of Tarmogoyf was going to go down because there was new supply entering the field in the form of uh, Modern Masters 2013, not supply being taken out. So there are a lot of theories on why that can occur. Like I've talked to many finance people that Tarmogoyf was, uh, or Modern Masters 2013 GP Vegas was just when Modern exploded. So even though there were a ton of Tarmogoyfs that entered in to the uh, market, there are more people that then picked up one or two Tarmogoyfs uh, in their weekend and then said, oh, I have two of them. I might as well finish off my playset. And therefore, it increased the overall prices of Tarmogoyf. But it was very, very suspect of those companies doing these these shady things like taking things out of stock and uh, putting them back or increasing the price and then putting them back in stock when they have a bazillion copies of that particular card and no one else does. So the the thing that it, that really irks me, though, is we have this double standard in the Magic the Gathering community. I've been very critical of Tularean Community College in the past because he's been very critical of me. I actually did an entire hit piece video that was uh, directly uh, directed specifically at me uh, because I think I was the only one that was posting screenshots of popper cards. Funny thing about that, a lot of those popper cards I didn't actually even buy into. We just, I have a store. I buy collections. I just actually had them lying around and then just put, you know, LOL and showed 36 needle drops when there's a needle drop spike. So what really irks me is it's these, this MTG Finance or even my videos, The Market Monday, anyone watches them, they get a lot of negative attention by the uh, players that think that there shouldn't be a secondary market or that we exploit the secondary market or we drive prices up in Magic the Gathering due to buyouts and things like that. Nothing comes close to what Card Kingdom, Channel Fireball, Star City Games, and other the, the major vendors do. If you want to blame any sort of speculators, any ones that have a massive effect on the market, those are the culprits that really can throw money around and, and corner markets and drive the, the price up. So I'm going to give you a few examples of those right now. So we've got this beautiful card called Ristic Study. I have been so uh, bearish on Ristic Study. I've been very, very hesitant, scared of this card because we we absolutely do know that there is Bant Enchantments. There, that it's an entire deck that is uh, dedicated toward enchantments. Ristic Study is a common that has not been reprinted since Commander Arsenal, so it was last printed in a Commander set. So therefore, Wizards has had no problem in the past printing in a Commander set. However, this card is up to $12.00 in just the price of uh, TCG Mid and other Ebays and things like that. This is kind of the market price uh, right now for the Ristic size around $11.64. But lo and behold, 
Card Kingdom has it at $18. Again, like I said earlier, this is usually what happens when a card is completely out of stock on their website and they just need to refill it because, you know, a missed sale is sometimes the worst thing uh, coming from retail. The missed opportunity uh, is also miss sell on something else. So if they, someone comes to buy a Ristic Study, you don't have any, maybe they would have picked up a few other cards. So you're actually missing out more on not only the Ristic Study, but those potentially other cards. And even worse, if you don't have that Ristic Study, they'll go to your competitors. And even if you, sometimes if you lose money, it's better that they buy from you than to buy from your competitors. This is a massive market game that you are playing with your competitors. Any dollar your competitor competitor makes is, is not a dollar you only do not earn, but it's a dollar that goes towards their overhead and goes to this big war that we call, you know, that's the markets, that's capitalism. Uh, that's just how, you know, the cookie crumbles in this particular world. So, I've been following Card Kingdom for quite some time. It seems to be this is how what happens. They start to sell out of a card. They Their complete inventory goes down and then they get aggressive on their buy list. Well, is that the case with Ristic Study? We can come over here to Card Kingdom. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And lo and behold, they have at least 20 in stock at near mint for $18. So they're aggressively buying this card. Let's see if we can find the buy list. So... Come over here on Cyclonicers when we'll talk about in a stack second for Ristic Study and pull it up. And you can see that they're buying Ristic Studies uh, for 10 bucks and the Commander Arsenal's ones for 30 bucks. And they, uh, the, a couple days ago, they're actually buying this for 11. In fact, I just refreshed this. They just, since I've been talking to this, this video, oh, if we come over here, yeah, that's what it was for Ristic Study. It says, you know, Card Kingdom is buying them for 10. Yeah, this is actually down. They were actually buying it for close to 11 the other day uh, for this particular one. So this is this is where I am very, very suspect. Uh, most people that follow MC Finance, and you got to think that Card Kingdom is under this, uh, and you've seen Card Kingdom do this in the past in Star City Games. When a reprint is on the horizon, so before a master says, before a, uh, a box set, like a commander box set, you don't want to be investing in cards that could easily be reprinted because you don't want to be the one holding that amount of value that's going to go down to the reprint. So Ristic Study has a high chance of being reprinted in my opinion. Again, its last printing was the Commander Arsenal. The, the version of that Commander Arsenal is now insanely expensive at the $40 mark. They're even buying it for $30. And the regular common card, I believe this is the most expensive common in non like later sets. I'm, I, I could be wrong there. There could be a card. I mean, there's Oubliette that's more expensive, but I don't, I'm not thinking of a common that is more expensive than $12 at the moment. And this is the time to make a move on Ristic City. I get it. If it isn't reprinted in the set, this card can go up in value. But again, this it, it's too rich for my blood to be making those type of, of gambles when if you come over to like EDH Rec and look at the top 100 cards, you can see that almost all of these cards have been reprinted recently. And then you come to Ristic Studies and it hasn't had a reprint for quite some time. In fact, the, the, the latest version of this was this TDO. On, I don't know why they even use uh, online cards in here. Uh, but it, again, it hasn't been reprinted in comparison to all these other cards in front of it. Has been reprinted, has been reprinted, has been reprinted, has been reprinted. This is the first card that you can come down this list that has not seen a recent reprinting. So when Wizards of the Coast is looking for these things, that's exactly where they be. I know this is an annoying card in Commander, and some people don't like the Ristic Study uh, existing in Commander. However, it's a very popular card. It's a common, it needs a reprint. So if Ristic Study is not reprinted in this set, Again, it might be the time to get, to grab our pitchforks and really start thinking of insider trading as this as 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 pretty sure evidence. I know that that uh, Channel Fireball increased their price as well of Ristic Study to up to a whopping uh, sixteen bucks. Let's see if we come over. If they're out of stock. Then of course that 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 could be the reasoning for that. Uh, Ristic Study is in stock. For a ton of copies, so way above TGG market price, uh, for, uh, up three bucks more and 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 six bucks more about from that TCG market, or five five and five in uh five and two, uh for so slightly paid yeah yeah I'd say I'd say, yeah I'd say four and six is actually about right uh four so they are completely stocked up uh with the Ristic study yet they increase their price of this card. Again, that is very, very suspect to me about Ristic Study. Now, if it is reprinted, then we can say, okay, all right, yep, then these guys 
aren't insider trading and they don't have access to stuff, but it is very, very, this is very questionable. Uh, there's a lot of them like the Chain Veil, that's another card. And we, we are seeing a bunch of other cards that I think are, are very ripe for reprints, uh, like the Cyclonic Rift, uh, that also uh, Card Kingdom has re aggressively uh, increased their value of these buy lists. You can buy list cards right to, to Card Kingdom for $12.50 for the Cyclonic Rift. Cyclonic Rift right now is going uh for yeah around that $12 mark again the TCG market price about $11.66 so therefore you are actually getting a better price by listing this directly to card kingdom than you are directly on the TCG player market price so these are the type of cards that, that I'm definitely looking at and following closely to see if there is any sort of shenanigans going on. Like I said, usually EDH Rec is a good indication of cards that are going to be reprinted. They follow this very closely. I challenge people to even go through these. It does cause what we call a little bit of a, a feedback loop. Yeah, I know that's not the proper term because feedback loop means completely something different, but it, it causes a loop that is due to feedback and feedback in this case being players playing per certain cards. So of course, if you create a deck with a card in it in a pre-constructed deck, then people are going to just put that deck on EDH Rec or, or tapped out or wherever they put uh, Goldfish, wherever they put their data on the EDH Rec, rips it from uh, of that deck with just some slight changes. And then it looks like a lot more people are actually playing those particular cards than they really are uh, due to them uh, being in the box set. And then it just gets rinse and repeat because Wizards like, oh, people like this. So they put it again in the next one and yada, yada, yada. So very, very suspect. It's it's crazy. If you come down any one of these cards, uh, go by t color by color, uh, you can see there are not a lot of candidates that have not seen a reprint. So that's why I said that we should be following Dictative Erebos very closely as well and Sadisi's Undead Vizier, as both these cards have not seen a reprint yet, and they are in the top 10 list of black cards uh, seeing play at Heroes Downfall as well. I could actually see Heroes Downfall being reprinted in this particular set uh, box set because uh, there are a lot of planeswalkers that need to be taken care of and Heroes Downfall is a natural way to, to do that. So again, I guess this can look into to a little bit of a, a, a spec target, more of a what you should be getting out of. But I guess we can come over here and check Card Kingdom and see if they're actually buying them. So if this ends up coming true, this will be a good way going forward to know if cards are going to be reprinted or not to see if these people are, are up in their buy list. So $4.70, that's quite aggressive on a Sidisi as well. I think the market price for this is around five to six bucks for Sidisi and the uh, Card Kingdom is paying $4.70 or $6.11 for credit. Uh, if we come back over to this EDH Black, let's see what they're doing with the Heroes Downfall. Hero, heroes, actually we should probably look at, let's look at some, what they're buying these cards for while we're doing this. So Sidisi, uh, Undead Vizier, is going for a whopping eight dollars and fifty cents. They do seem to be out of a lot of stock with these, only seven. Actually, they cap out at eight here, though, so they actually are a little bit lower. Uh, other than someone might have purchased this and it might not have refilled it. Don't know how their their software actually handles this on Card Kingdom. Um, however, you know, not a lot of these very good and goods in stock either. Not a lot of so this this is something that they they. But again, that it's not aggressive aggressive comparative comparison to the market price is still under it. They're not paying over the market price for CDC. So maybe CDC is going to get a reprint. Kind of weird though, right now with the themes of where CDC would fit because it doesn't of course fit in the Is It deck. Uh, so that leaves Jund and uh, Esper and Esper is top of, the top of your library matters. I don't know if Exploit is where this wants to be and Jund is land. So CDC is actually looking pretty good. So these this might be a hold at this point for CDC uh, and then sell you know, if four, five, six months, you can actually hold it until the next big announcement for a set being reprinted is going to be reprinted. So, man, I was going to talk about a, a insider trading and actually got into some 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 good <laughs> finance tips here. All right, so let's look at Heroes Downfall. Uh, Heroes Downfall is being bought for a dollar eighty. It doesn't look like they're very aggressive on it. Let's come over here to see where they are selling it for. Uh, Heroes Downfall is being sold for $4.50, uh, which will come over to TCG Player. Uh, this, I hope this is a, this is exactly how I start to do uh, a lot of my specs too, is just you want to get as many. Um, that's pretty aggressive, a buck 80 towards three. 
It's not terribly aggressive, though. And 450. Uh, how many in stock did they have with the Hero's Downfall? Plenty in stock. Eight in stock. Uh, only one here. A little bit of a... I believe this was the Clash Pack for... And these can be had for so cheap. I think I can still buy these Clash Packs for, like, nothing from distributors. They, they're still sitting on a ton of them. So I don't believe there was anything in this Clash Pack. There was a, a Corsair Crew Fix and a Hero's Downfall in these particular Clash Packs. So a lot of supply of these still even exist. And sealed product that hasn't even been cracked because it's not been worth it. Um, you can go check the deck list out for those particular ones if you just Google them. And Google Gold, Goldfish at the end of them, you can usually find the uh, contents of Clash Packs. And that will be something that if you are a part of my Patreon. Patreon, you get the distributor prices. I will let you know if any of these are available. Some of these like weird box sets, and I believe this one still is. So we're trying to, we're going to, to expand to other distributors uh, in the near future if we get, if it's worthwhile for us, if we get more patrons. So a little bit of a shameless uh, self-promotion here uh, to, if you are looking for a way to get cheap sealed product at distributor price, we do offer that at our Patreon for a $20 and above tier, it depends on how much you spend above 20 bucks. I think $20 gets up to five uh, dis products at distributor pricing per month. 25 gets 10. It's either five or a case or 10 and two case at 25. 50 gets up to 25. And then if you get up to 100, then I'm going to give you unlimited and then $250 per month. If you're crazy enough to do that, I have had people sign up for that in the past. You get first dibs on any uh, product that we don't use. So if there ever was a Modern Masters like 2017 type set that comes out again and we just don't fulfill our entire order, you can buy the rest of them for us. You get first dibs at that. So anyway, uh, there's a, a little plug for our Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash rogue deck builder, help support these type of videos. So uh, we're, we're actually, I'm making a move on the market with Wizards kind of uh, really sticking it to the local game store now with uh, moving away from the, the direct shipping uh, right from them. You have to go through a distributor now. There's no way around it. They, they, they cut off their direct shipping or their direct sales department. So what they called it. And it, there's, it, it is a, a very, very uh, uncertain time too with even this Hasbro's quarterly earnings that just came out uh, with them really focusing on how successful MTG Arena has been. And Arena is still a proven idea. I don't know why they're they're definitely counting their, their chickens before they hatch. I think that this, this whole little push right before their Q uh, quarterly earnings to get as many players sign up for Arena as possible was a little bit disingenuous uh, to you know, break their servers. And a lot of people just signed up with those codes with, with multiple accounts just to try to log on and actually do that. And I don't know, it's a bit of a bit, a little bit disingenuous in my opinion. However, uh, again, there is, I, I just don't see the local game store really having a, an ability to survive in this climate without really going online and really having a lot of purchasing power. So it really helps me if you do sign up for Patreon, you get your money back even with that five purchases. You got to think that you're only you're only given $4 per purchase towards Rogue Deck Builder at the five at the $20 tier and you're getting boxes at 78 bucks a box right there. Uh, that ends up being even 82 bucks a box. It's still way cheaper than you're going to be able to find on the internet. So if you do buy like uh, even sleeves to deck boxes, things like that. And you want to give back to the channel, that's the way to do that. All right, that out of the way with the, the Patreon, let's get back to the, the thing at hand. So again, this is a good little tip to try to see the flow of the market. So come over here to Card Kingdom's buy list. You can do this also with like Channel Fire by Abu Games. The reason I like Card Kingdom is that they, I think, are really close to, if not one of the, uh, th I think they're competing now with Star City Games and Channel Fireball with actually the sales. Their sales are through the roof. They were smart. They sponsored people like Tularean Community College and Magic Man Sam and EDH Rec and just where a lot of traffic was, a lot of the casual traffic of uh, Command Zone, uh, the all those, they sponsored them, got a lot of those eyes and it, it did lead to a lot of sales. That's why they, they charge a premium for their products. They're always like a dollar, two dollars more for per card uh, than the T C mid. But you can you can check trends with card kingdom being out of stock. You can see a lot of movement uh, in, in directions to know where to buy, where to sell, where the flow of things are. Usually card kingdom is, is, is way before card sphere. So before I ever, uh, send any card off on card sphere, I'll go definitely go and check card kingdom. That's another way that card sphere operates is card sphere is run by a lot, not run, but a, a lot of the more power traders are also people that buy list quite a bit. So they, they try to play what we call the arbitrage game, where if you can get a card on card sphere for six bucks and sell it 
to uh, uh, Card Kingdom for eight dollars buy list. That's a two dollar profit. Uh, just you know, you, you do a big buy list every month to a place like Card Kingdom, or if you can get above that fifteen percent fee of what it's going to cost you uh, to sell it on TC Player, that's also another way you can make off Card Sphere. So a lot of these Card Sphere people are doing the exact same thing I'm I'm doing. They're going through a lot of spread of buy lists. Uh, they're looking and seeing what cards are going for what and see if there's any opportunities uh, to get a card for lower or get a card or sell a card for higher on the various platforms. So Heroes Downfall, I think, is a, another card you should be looking at uh, as a potential investment if there isn't any uh, in this commander set. I've always thought that I've always not really liked Heroes Downfall because it's such a generic card name that can easily be thrown in any set. We can see it in Ravnica easily. Uh, return to return to Ravnica in the standard set. Uh, we do have Vraska's Contempt at the moment. We actually have Murder, so I don't think that that's a very good plausible card to be thrown in at the moment because it's you know it's kind of redundant. Uh, however, it could easily be in a box set, a master set, things like that, or dual those type of dual type decks that they have. I know they're not called dual decks anymore, uh, but yeah. It's 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 a definite threat. Uh, generic names or something with generic abilities that can easily be reprinted in anything are a lot of times something you want to kind of veer away from. You want to find key mechanic cards and key name cards as the things you invest in. So uh, again, you can definitely scroll down this list, and whenever you find a card, look at Whip of Veribos. That's not that's another card that I probably wouldn't touch right now because again, we're in this enchantment base. Oh no, Bant enchantments. Actually, that one's actually safe right now because it's Bant, and this is actually in black. So I don't think this is going to be reprinted in a commander set, uh, as I don't think it top of life matter or top of the deck matters cares about it uh, with this particular card. So that's a, that I highly suggest you do go by color. Uh, color is a better way to do that because if you just go by top cards, it's just going to try to show you cards per deck. So Putrefy will get, even though it's in only 20,000 um, uh, decks, it's going to say that it's, you know, it's going to rank higher than Demonic Tutor, which is definitely in more decks than Putrefy. It's in 43,000. Still a good way, though, that you can look at these these other type cards and uh, try to figure out accordingly how popular they are in what decks, especially if there is like Mirari's Wake, for example. Mirari's Wake probably is a pretty good a uh, little pickup if it isn't printed in this commander set. It would just was printed in the last commander set because it fits in that Bant enchantment theme. Uh, there was a lot of reserve list cards you've already missed the mark on that work in these these artifact enchantment lands matter type themes. Those have already been bought out uh, and uh, people are looking for a, a big cash out uh, when these full commander set lists are spoiled. So again, this is just something I'll try to find more of these type of cards. I found it interesting that Food Chain uh, is another card that's just going crazy that has a pretty massive spread of $60 here, but only $35. Oh, it's up to $45 on market price. is actually up to $50. So again, this is where market price is actually better than mid price uh, because these are being purchased. So it means these other copies that are at $47 are not moving due to due to some sort of flaw or uh, the vendor that's selling them isn't, isn't something people want to buy from. So yeah. A lot of little tri tricks and tips you can do by just compares comparing markets. And usually you, you can tell a good spec when all there's a lot of movement in all the markets. Not in one market, in many markets. And then you can get, a, get ahead of them. Food Chain is a card that I have been very, very... Uh, it needs reprinted just for legacy. It's not on the reserve list because it's uh, Mercadian Masks. But this card is, has continued to go up. Looks like there's been a little bit of a dip there. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Uh, but Card Kingdom again has a, a massive spread uh, towards the Food Chain. So just thought I'd give, give a little bit of food for thought there. I guess we can go over spoilers now and maybe pick a few 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 targets here. But keep your eye on these specific cards I've mentioned, like the Cyclonic Rift. I find Cyclonic Rift and Ristic Studies especially to be suspect. That they are... Oh, Cyclonic Rift hasn't been printed for a while and it needs a printing. It's one of the, the, the second most played card in Commander after Soul Ring uh, by popularity of, of decks that it can go in. And it hasn't been printed a lot of time. That's because people say that it's on the watch list. There's a lot of people that want it banned. However, uh, Card Kingdom being full in stock of uh, Cyclonic Rifts, yet at, still actively buying it at such a, a massive level when we have a Commander 2018 that is just, it is weeks away. And the, the, the probability of Cyclonic Rift is insanely high to be in that deck. And maybe they just like they hedge their bet on that one that even if it gets reprinted like it was last time, it will recoup its value and more uh, within just a matter of months. So I don't know. Very, very suspect. I'm interested in your comments uh, below, especially if you can find any of these particular 
um, cards that that s- seem to be does to include in these decks yet are being bought out. And then we can compare notes. And when these sets are released, it's time to go to town. It's time to definitely look at uh, the cards that were printed and, and kind of where people were buy listing them, where people are, which companies were buy listing them at high, uh, even when they had them in stock. And pff, there's a leak if that's the case. So not going to throw in accusations yet. Let's see how it plays out. I know for a fact though, in the, in the past, like with the Tarmogoyf, the number of total Tarmogoyfs was definitely leaked to Star City Games. They made an educated decision with knowledge that the public did not have, which is the definition of insider trading. Insider trading is wrong when a company releases information to a potential buyer, like a stock investor or, uh, anyone that's even purchasing their uh, particular uh, you know, products and things like that without letting the public have that access to the same information. So it gives an edge. Uh, the early 1900s were riddled with insider trading. That's exactly why there were, were regulations in place uh, when stock markets became a big uh, part of the economy uh, because it was just ripe with corruption. And um, a magic is just an unregulated market at this time that so far there's been no hand slapping for this type of thing. What I can tell you, even though we don't have like full proof though, is I was approached at GP Vegas by a fan of mine. Uh, actually, he's come into my store before, uh, driven all the way from California to see me. So uh, kind of a big fan there. Um, did tell me to get rid of both the Scape Shifts and the uh, Crucible of Worlds right before M19 uh, spoilers. Um, it, was, it was like we were in, in the weekend of the GP because he told me Tuesday they were they are going to be spoiled. And lo and behold, Tuesday morning, I wake up and Escape Shift and Cyclonic Rift were, or some Cyclonic Rift, Crucible of Worlds were spoiled in M19. So he told me without a, ma- without a you know, complete fact of the matter, uh, knew for a fact that these were going to be uh, reprinted that the information is leaking from wizards. There's a lot of, uh, a, of, of, of just shenanigans that goes on a lot of un- people that are unhappy with their job jobs, but it's insanely illegal. These people can be prosecuted and there would be jail time, uh, involved if this, they were caught, if like the, uh, like the federal trade commission, I don't know if they're actually over this, this particular things would actually get involved in this, uh, or the DOJ, whatever department that actually would investigate this, this sort of corruption, uh, would actually turn its eyes towards magic, the gathering. So scary times we live in, especially with the reserve list. You can see here, I've got some of, some of these reserve list cards pulled up at the moment. We're just seeing runaway prices on even more of these like guys cradles, what, 450 now, uh, just insanity. It's got to, yeah, we're going to approach a $500 guys cradle. Uh, and there's a lot of these that even are in existence, even from Urza Saga. It's not even to the point where uh, very, very rare cards from d- the dark behind uh, have these insane price tags. So uh, you gotta gotta assume there's gonna be a lot more corruption happening. So anyway, let's just take a re- really quick look at the spoilers and see if there's any duh cards out the gates. Um, the uh, this one's kind of a, a black card. It just costs less for every card that attacks. This uh, not gonna even click on the translate. It's a ten mana. For every creature that attacks a turn, it costs one less. And then when it dies, it puts out a 612 construct. Nothing special there. The Loyal Drake is a three mana for a 2 2 with Lieutenant. They're bringing that back. Uh, you can think of maybe some of the other Lieutenants might be reprinted. I don't know though. Uh, if you control your, your commander, you draw a card. So this is going to be a good card for early commanders. Then have a Loyal Drake and then it starts acting as like a Phyrexian Arena. Uh, the Enchanter's Bane is, is such a terrible card. Don't even read it. The Vidalcan Humiliator is a card it seems like so these decks though this is a kind of a a um kind of a preview i think of what's uh, some of these cards are going to have answers towards other decks so i'm assuming this is in the red blue deck at the beginning of your end step target enchantment deals damage equal to its converted mana cost to its controller unless that player sacrifices it so yeah i think it's going to actively be targeting that bad enchantments deck for this but it's such a bad card uh who cares about taking that mana cost like if you put on an omni- omniscient sure but Eh, whoop de do at that point. Uh, Vidalcan Humiliator, uh, with Metal Craft, you attack, creatures become 1-1, one, one, uh, base power and toughness until end of turn. That's kind of cool if you have cards like Electricery that can kill it off. Uh, Metal Craft, it looks like, will come back. There might be some Metal Craft cards. Uh, speaking of which, if, if if cards aren't spoiled, that's the time to, to really pull the trigger on a lot of those like Grand Architect type cards. Um, or uh, what's the old school Foundry Inspector? Uh, things that reduce the cost of artifacts. Uh, there are plenty of them. Uh, in the history, you can look at like Jora decks, not Jora the Gitchu, but the, the recent Jora decks, 
uh, for kind of inspiration of cards that can go up because of this uh, these blue red artifacts. That's the best way to do that. I typically don't like to before the full spoilers are released to uh, go in a card. I like to take the safer route. Usually have even a couple of weeks before they hit the market when you can figure out what cards go in what deck. And so we're going to keep a close eye on these particular decks. We're starting to see some themes happen, and then we'll pull the trigger uh, once we get the full spoiler for these. So again, you miss out on cards that the there there. There might be some cards that are bought out beforehand before the full spoiler. However, usually if time is 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 uh, if if the past is it holds true this time, you have a bit of, bit of a window for those investments, a good two week window. But again, that is closing more and more as people get into MTG finance. The Burrow Clad te uh, Telchor Engineer, six mana for a four four creature tokens have haste. At being of your combat on your turn, you create a two one uh, mirror artifact. And then you choose a token you control. If you do, each other token becomes a copy of that token. That's pretty crazy uh, for token-based decks that put out massive tokens. And then all of them, all your little thopters and mirrors and servos become copies of that. And you can swing in for lethal. There's also some pretty crazy tokens too. Because let's see, common your turn create it. So each other token becomes a copy of, of that token. So it doesn't even have to be a token creature. It can be a token of anything. So something that's created a token a copy of a, uh, there's plenty of those type of, of, uh, what's that, that, uh, mirror. Is it a mirror that lets you, uh, imprint it? And then you put a token of an artifact, uh, each turn that can be pretty crazy with this card. There's again, you'll, you'll start to see a lot of synergies, read those articles, start to see when people find those, uh, shenanigans with it, uh, follow the, the people with the most, uh, subscribers like Clearing Community College and Command Zone, they and and they typically have a lot of pull on the market. And it looks like, yeah, we can keep going down these these particulars. Not going to go over it too far. We're already up to thirty minutes. Apologize for kind of a, a uh, not really even a market. Not a lot of advice here. I hope you got something out of it though. Uh, with with how you know using arbitrage. Uh, but that that's just a topic I definitely wanted to talk about was. The, the the real threat of insider trading into our market and and it's scary we have a scary scary times we live in it's not mg finance like it was it's, it's not your mother's mtg finance two years ago even three years ago of of uh in my opinion more even playing field when the big bucks have really got into this hope you enjoyed this video this has been kevin with roguedeckbuilder.com thanks for watching